I'm Caleb from You Can Make This Too, and today I'm going to show you how I remade this rear tote for this Stanley plane. To make this project easier, I went to LeeValley.com and pulled down one of their handle templates. I used the one for number five planes and larger, because this is a number seven, so that's the one for the plane I'm doing right now. Of course, the first thing I did though was take that template and compare it to the handle I took off of the plane just to make sure everything lined up correctly, and it did. So then I took two templates because I had enough wood to make two handles, and I figured may as well make another while I'm at this because I have some other Stanley planes that I plan on restoring that are number five and larger. I started by roughing out the handles at the bandsaw, but I got a little carried away and realized that I should have drilled my holes sooner. Fortunately, the offcuts weren't mangled yet, so I was able to piece it back together and drill the main hole through the handle. I also took it to the miter saw to cut the place where the handle is going to meet the plane because that needs to be perfectly flat so they meet together the best. And then go back to the bandsaw and finish cutting out the rest of the template. You'll notice that I try to stay right on the edge of the line and then later I'll bring everything down to the right size because you can always take more away, but it's really hard to add wood back. Now I needed to drill the front hole and I got really stupid right here. What I should have done is taken some offcut to back up this wood because it's so thin or started with a really small bit and worked my way up. That actually worked on the second handle, but I got in a hurry and the wood blew out on me. Fortunately though, I was able to mix together some five minute epoxy, put some glue on my clamps and just squeeze this thing together and was able to salvage the handle. Now I was ready to start shaping it. I haven't done much hand tool work, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to play with some rasps. So I bought a rasp set and used that to rough out most of the roundovers and everything. But rasps, of course, aren't the only way to do this. You could also use spoke shapes, draw knives, chisels, carving knives, or even a router with a roundover bit. There's lots of options to get creative. And then once I got most of the handle rough out, I went to my oscillating belt slash spindle sander to do all the final kind of work on it and really get it to shape. This worked well because I could use it to make sure that the sides of the handle were flat and then smooth out all my roundovers to make sure they were consistent across the handle. And then I used the smaller diameter of the belt to get into some of the nooks and crannies on the handle. And once I'd done all I could there, I switched to one of the smaller spindles to really finesse everything. After I was done at the belt and spindle sander, I clamped this thing back up and used some flexible paper just to get a really nice soft finish on it and make sure all of the scratched lines were going with the grain. Rosewood is really oily wood, so I didn't want to mess with any issues I might have with an oil finish. So I just used several coats of paste wax. I would rub it on, let it sit, and then rub on some more, and then buffed it all out. And I was really happy with the way it came out. It looks and feels great. 